Hello and welcome back. Let's continue on our exploration of identity and access management. When we left off in the previous lesson, we had discussed policies and we still had the issue of our admin user not currently having any access to any AWS services. So now let's talk specifically about IAM users. Now, given a lot of the context over the last several lessons, you should have a good idea of what IAM users are. But now let's take a look specifically at what an IAM user is and how it is managed. So he, over here in the IAM console, let's click on users and we will see here that we have our admin user. Let's go ahead and click on the admin user. And here, what we see is that we have the user Amazon resource name. And what the Amazon resource name is, and you're gonna see ARN for every single resource that you set up in AWS. But here it's stating that it's an ARN. It is part of AWS, the service that is a part of IAM, the account number, and then it's a user, it's a user, and the user's name, admin. So this is the ARN for the user admin. And this is how this user inside of AWS is identified. So first we can take a look at permissions here under this tab, and we see here that there are no permissions currently assigned to this user. There are also no groups that this user is a part of. For security credentials, we do see several things here. Here you can come and you can manage the user's password. Here it's enabled. If I click on manage password, I can change the password or reset the password. There's the console login link for this particular user. You can see if multi-factor authentication is set up for this user admin, which it is currently not. Uh, also signing certificates as well. There's also access keys, and we're gonna get into this in much more detail during our access keys lesson. But for now, let's go back over to the Orion papers and let's read a little bit about IAM users. So when first created, and I'm repeating this again because it's so important, by default, an IAM user has a non-explicit deny for all AWS services and does not have access to use them until a policy granting and allow access has been applied to the user or to the group that the user belongs to. Another important fact is that IAM users receive unique access credentials so you do not and should not share with others, meaning that if you are a user yourself, you should never give or share your user credentials with somebody else because it's so easy here just to create another user for them and give them their own set of login credentials, whether it's the login credentials or the access API keys. This is very important to never share your credentials. Also, user credentials should never be stored or passed to an EC2 instance. This is just best practice for security and something that you should know as part of this course. Users can have group and regular user policies applied to them, meaning a user can have multiple IAM policies applied to them at the same time. You can have policies assigned to a group and that user a part of the group as how that user is given permission or you can have policies directly applied to the user. Again, by default, extremely important, which is why I repeat this, an explicit deny always overrides an explicit allow from an attached IAM policy. Also, multi-factor authentication, which we see here, can be configured on a per user basis for login and resource access and actions. So we can actually create multi-factor authentication for this user, not just our root user. So you can do it for every user, and then you can also get granular with multi-factor authentication in terms of what they can do within specific services. So to understand how policies and users work together, let's take a look at this diagram here. Let's say that we have three users, Kunal, Matt, and Donna. And let's say that there's an S3 bucket. In order for any one of these three users to access that S3 bucket, an IAM S3 access policy would have to be attached. So in this example, the S3 policy is attached to Matt, so he has access to the bucket. But if this policy is not attached to Kunal or Donna, then they do not have access to that S3 bucket. So here's just a quick example diagramming out the purpose and the use of IAM policies and how they work with users. So now back over here, let's actually go ahead and attach an IAM policy to our admin user. So clicking back to our permissions tab, I can click here to add permissions. So I'm gonna add this user to a group, 
copy permissions from existing user or attach existing policies directly. So at this point, I'm just going to attach directly. So I'll click on that. And what I'll do is I'll search for admin and we're going to look for administrator access. That is our full administrator access privileges. I'll click on that, scroll down here and click on next review and click on add permissions. So this user now has, as we can view here, the administrator access policy where again, effect allow action, all resources, all. So that is our administrative access policy that has now been applied to our user admin. So I can now log out as the root user because it is not best practice to use the root user and I can log back in as the admin user and now have full rights. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll log out here. And again, I want to switch over to the link that takes me to the IAM user login page, put in admin, put in my password. And unlike before, what I should find now is that this admin user should have full access to all resources. So let's click on CloudWatch. Comes up, should be able to use everything. Click on EC2. Before where it said here that I didn't have access or authorization, I now have access and authorization. So I can now click on IAM again and go to users. And as an admin user, I actually now have full rights to both add and restrict policies and manage users and groups, as well as all other services and resources within Amazon Web Services. And if I ever want to create additional users, which I'm sure you will, all you need to do is go up here and click on add user and I can create a new username so I can create Kunal. I can give him AWS management console access. I can click on create custom password, give him a password. And now let's say that for Kunal, I want to give him access to this S3 bucket down here. So I can click on add existing policies and I can type in S3 to bring up the S3 policies. These are the pre-made templates and I can click on Amazon S3 full access, click review, create user. So now what I did in this case is when I was creating the user, I attached the policy. So in this example here, Kunal actually now has a policy attached to him for S3 full access and he will be able to access the bucket if he were to log in. And again, if I click on Kunal, I'll be able to view the policies that are attached to him. I can read the policy itself, which is effect allow, action, S3, everything within S3 and all of the resources within S3. We can also view his security credentials. Here I can, again, change or modify his password, have it reset, and you can also see his console login link here. And if you notice, he also has an ARN number, which although similar to the admin ARN is different because it's identifying the username at the end as being different. So in the next video, we're going to move into groups and how to assign policies and also add users to groups. But for now, that will conclude this lesson. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.